everyone, except your dad ski with <laughs> mother. Mother. <laughs> um, the house in the hill was mother's domain. Okay, so it's Mary Maisie, of course, star of Bullets Over Broadway. She's, by the way, she's, look at the full amazing size zero. She oh. still <laughs> got it. Where was I? Okay, there we go. So, so because it's Gay Pride Playbill Month, yes. Marin has an amazing story about uh, the world goes round and how important musical theater really is to gay people and it's a combination of how beautiful musical theater is and combination of outing yourself for alcoholism. Go. <laughs> uh, when I was on tour with World Goes Round, mm, a long time ago, uh, we were in Chicago. Uh, my understudy was gonna do the show because she was from Chicago and it was this planned thing and she had like 100 people coming to the show or something. So I took the night off and I, my family was in town. I went out to dinner with them. I was having dinner, I was having drinks. I was having drinks. I was okay. having drinks. And then someone came over to the, this was before cell phones. So it's a long time ago. I know, <laughs> I'm old. Um, so it was before cell phones. And so someone came over to the table and said, your stage manager is on the phone. Hello, Marin. Shelly fell down and during, uh, she, she, I think it was during the end of act one, she, roller or, no, roller skating. She, no, I had to go do the roller skate. She fell during some number, I don't know. I don't know Maybe which this time. That's when she fell down. Class. Exactly. That was it. <laughs> Why would you hurt her knee? Anyway, you have to come back and do the show. Oh, okay. So I stumbled. I hadn't eaten, only drinking. The food hadn't come yet. Stumble into the cab, go to the theater, put on my clothes. So Jeannie, Jeannie Croft, who was doing me for the night for all her friends, had to now switch uh -huh. to sell the other track. So then I came out, so she had to like switch gears too. Why? Why? Because How did she still because go on? I know Jeannie, the understudy, was doing my track. Oh, Shelly, I see. Who, and Jeannie covered both of us. So, <laughs> so then she had to switch tracks and be Shelly. And then, so I came back just in time to do the, the rink, the roller skates. Okay, drinking. And I had to do a cartwheel on the roller skates. Wanna go around the rink? Yes. <laughs> So I did it. Anyway, so finished, finished act one, act two, you know, ring them bells, all the great numbers in act two, how lucky can you get, fantastic. So the end of the show, I come out and I see a, a, an old college friend, Mark Strand, who I did shows with in college. And I haven't seen him since college. And he's crying and he's saying to me, Marin, I, I came to see the show just because of you. And if you hadn't come back, I would never have seen you. And he was very sick and he was, he was basically dying. He died very shortly after this. So it was just one of those things. I, I was, it was so amazing that, I mean, bizarre that poor Shelley had to get hurt, but so amazing that I was able to come back and I was able to see him and it was, it was, it was really, you know, amazing. beautiful. He literally showed up only to see her. It is one of those God things where God was like, you know what, Shelley? Push. Push, because he came to see Marin. And, you know, we love you, but he really needs to see her and I needed to see him. That's so sweet. That was great. But by the way, what I also love is the craziness of the theater. Wasn't there like an announcement made or a slip put in? I, I don't, oh yeah, it was the roles usually performed by Marin Maisie will now be performed by Marin Maisie. That was the announcement. Because she had been out. <laughs> it makes no sense. Okay, so that's A. So the second one is, so Marin is all Miss, oh I'm blonde and I'm so pure. We'll cut to, she's doing Ragtime, which we got to do together on Broadway. And by the way, the most brilliant performance ever. Still oh, obsessed with it. Thank you. And uh, it's opening night. Yes. And if you know, there's a moment where she's off stage and the Victrola is playing Crime of the Century and Mother comes on singing Crime of the Century. With the little wagon, right before I find the baby. Right, and with the wagon, the house is coming on. So Marin Maisie's mic is on and she's singing along with Victrola. So it's opening night, yes. go. Okay, so I'm singing along crime of the century the set is shifting and that little that house was coming up the the horse perspective house the like big doll house coming up upstage right and i'm watching crime of the century crime of the century the house kind of hits at something and tilts like screws up so i'm going crime of the century crime of the oh shit. century microphone body mic on microphone on the whole audience heard me say oh shit. <laughs> Opening night. Opening night. And of course, Lynn Aaron's. Lynn Aaron's is like, <laughs> I knew it was you. It was you. Hey, I'm not going to say that's why the show closed, but it didn't run very long in Toronto. Okay, part three. This is my favorite, absolute favorite Marin Maisie story. So this involves passion, where you know Marin work had it going on. Go. Back, okay, so uh, this particular night of passion. So I was naked. Opening scene, completely naked, nothing on my body. Um, the show opens. Not like a dance belt, like literally nude. Literally nude, except for the wig and the microphone in my head. Um, and Jerry Shea, who played Giorgio, 
uh, was having some back issues. Now, he did wear a little bit of a G-string. No, I shouldn't say little. A very large <laughs> G-string. Um, <laughs> he was having some back issues. And um, that particular night, he put some sort of liniment on his back somewhere. And ben I, Gay, if you will. Ben Gay. And uh, I don't know if he just didn't wash his hands or something, because when he put his G-string on, it somehow got on the G-string. So then there I am sitting right on him, having the big orgasm at the top of the show. And you know we're sitting there. And we also would sort of prep a little bit before the show, so I'd sit on him a little bit before the curtain. Okay. Well, being a fluffer. Keep going. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so uh, so you know, big cord, all that, it come off, and we're, you know, uh, uh, I'm so happy, I'm afraid I'll die here in your arms, and I start to feel some warmth from a certain part of my body, and I'm like, oh my god, oh oh, <laughs> da, 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 die right here. And, what's up, boy? What's up, boy? What's up, boy? Did you hear the lyric? Yeah. <laughs> it's a Sondheim show. Sondheim show. Backstage. What's that part? So I come off for after that number to, to completely get dressed, like everything. And I'm in the thing, Alice Gilbert, our wardrobe supervisor, Bobby Sue, my dresser. And I'm like, my part's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> what are you like? What are you talking about? I'm like, I'm like, Jerry has something on his G string or something. My <laughs> and they're like scrambling, they're trying to dress me, and Alice is trying to get some sort of cloth or something to like make it go away. Ice cube, I don't know what. <laughs> okay, so in conclusion, go see Bulls for Broadway. Yes. And is it still on fire right now? It, it is not. It's 20 years later. Oh, it's on. Oh, God, that was bad. <laughs> My husband's gonna go, you really said that? It's still on fire. It's still Ooh, on fire. It's hot work. It's really hot. It's hotter than it ever was. It's more on fire than ever. <laughs>